Hi there, Facebook. It's Kamal Fernandez here um, on a, was it today? Tuesday afternoon. I'm looking a bit windswept. Uh, I have been out with the dogs today, this afternoon, and um, done a lesson, done some bits online. So uh, a productive day. And thank you very much for those of you that sort of shared comments and uh, obviously the conversation that I had or the the live that I did yesterday talking about confidence and how it can impact your dogs that have reactivity issues um, really resonated with a lot of people. So on that theme, <coughs> I'm going to talk about the next part of uh, the human realm. I'm just going to adjust the camera there. There we go. Um, unless, sorry, start that again. The next topic or the next heading or the next um, uh, consistent mental health challenge that I see a lot in clients and therefore their dogs, that definitely is something that can contribute to reactive behaviour. Um, uh, so yesterday I talked about confidence, the importance about protecting your confidence, nurturing your confidence, building your own confidence, never mind the dog, but building your own confidence, being aware of investing in that confidence bucket um, by thinking about how you see your dog, how you phrase um, yourself, uh, how the terms and labels that you attach to your dog and the terms and labels that you attach to yourself, thinking about surrounding your pe yourself with people that can lift you up. That's enough now. Um, and also thinking about investing in your own confidence. I talked about that at great length yesterday. So today I'm going to talk about the next um, uh, co common cause of reactive behaviour for both dogs and people, and that's anxiety. And that's something that I think needs to be talked about more, more openly, about the anxiety levels that not only dogs can have, but people can have. And that can sometimes be caused by um, a past experience. So you may be a person that's had challenges with anxiety um, previously. It could be from a past experience. It could be from ad adolescence. It could be from previous trauma. Um, and you may have a, a anxiety might be something that you have some struggles with. But that definitely is something that can impact on your dog's behaviour. Because obviously, as I discussed at great length yesterday, dogs are uh, uh, often reflecting back to us what we are feeling. They're a mirror of our emotion. But also further to that, if we are anxious in our, in our being and how we engage with our dog and how we walk our dog or the environments that we put them in, if we're really on tenterhooks, that's going to communicate concern to our dog and therefore subsequently that may cause them to react in a, re a reactive manner. When I say cause them, that might be uh, a trigger for it. So how do you overcome anxiety? How do you deal with anxiety when you uh, are facing that or you feel that might be something that's relevant for you and your dog? So first thing is to say that so many people have anxiety challenges and it could be, um, as I said, it could be something that they have battled with independently of their dog and often the dog is reflecting back to them their feeling of anxiety. So first is to be open and transparent in it. I think that we've now shifted that certainly, largely we've shifted our mindset to be more accepting and open about um, the human experience is very much about having mental health challenges and being open about that as a conversation. Um, but certainly anxiety, when it comes to your dog's behaviour, identifying where does that anxiety come from? Often it will be feeling out of control, feeling overwhelmed, feeling um, uh, concerned about what might happen, uh, anticipating the worst. Um, because you might have had a previously traumatic experience where, uh, you know, similar to confidence, somebody might have given you some verbal abuse, etc. Uh, and that might have ca caused you to be anxious. So now what you then subsequently do is anticipate that situation escalating in, and uh, into one where um, that's going to be repeated. And it's uh, anxiety is a response to, you know, our um, our lizard brain reacting out of fight or flight. And we're instantly thinking about flight in that instance. So there's things that you can do to combat anxiety. First off is to make sure that, again, self-care is self-care um, self is self-love. So making sure that you are looking after yourself and also thinking about um, how you're going to deal with those situations. OK, so if the dog's behavior is making you anxious, think about 
um, what the core root of that might be. Is it that you feel your dog, you can have that, um, lacks control or you lack control, oh, careful, you lack control of the dog. So how can we uh, help that not be an issue? We could use a harness. We could use a two point of contact lead. We could muzzle train our dog. Often people that have anxiety concerns with their dog's behavior are, are thinking in their mind of the behavior resulting in the dog attacking another dog, causing damage to another dog or another person. And that in itself buys into the narrative of the dog's going to be you know, seized and the worst case scenarios, euthanized, was kept in kennels and all those heinous things that our mind goes to. So to alleviate that from a practical point of view, we can think, right, I've got a harness on the dog. I've got the dog on a good secure lead at two points of contact on the back and on the front. I've got the dog on a muzzle um, as well so that if anything untoward is to happen, I'm leaving that. I'm using that, as I explained yesterday, that dynamic risk assessment. So to alleviate anxiety, we can think about using our when we're in a more um, when our mind is more receptive to thinking logically, we can plan out, our, we can prepare, we can use that to help s remove some of the anxiety that we might feel about going out for a walk. Another great thing to do is to call, call on the use of a friend or family member to support you, when uh, to help you go forward. You know, be open about the fact that you've got concerns about taking this dog note off to a certain location and asking, putting out to you know your friends and family members or peers to say, would you um, be willing to come with me and offer me some moral support? Great thing to do. Often people that get anxious about their dog's behaviour gets really uh, embarrassed by it. And I would urge you to say there's nothing to be ashamed of. So many people are in your predicament. And there's, there's lots of studies that you know show we have far more in common than we do uh, uh, different. Um, and one thing that I like to, to reference people is um, there's a... Um, what would you call him? A... I'm not illusionist, but there's a, um, I suppose, an illusionist slash magician, or uh, he's a, I, I can't remember his technical term, but there's somebody called Darren Brown, and, and you can go and Google him, and he does, he did a really great um, experiment, or, uh, a, 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 you know, a trick, if you want, if you want to call it, where he took various people in various parts of the world, and he independently said that he was, you know, he could do what, uh, you qualify as fortune telling by taking a piece of their jewellery and he could tell them, you know, things about their, their deep and dark thoughts and, you know, their ambitions and their their um, their wants and desires and so forth just by reading a particular piece of jewellery. So he took these people from various places. I think there was, London was one, I think maybe Tokyo, um, I can't, Paris maybe, I can't remember. But there was certain places across the world. And he then subsequently took the jewellery and he then wrote an elaborate book um, that detailed um, as if I think it was he would write the autobiography. I can't remember the details, but uh, the specifics, but I, he wrote a book and he then provided the book to each of the people in a brown envelope and then um, asked them to all open the book, uh, open the envelope and read the context of the book. And people described, you know, would rate how much, um, how realistic or how accurate the story was. And that varied in um, in varying, so that differed in varying degrees, but the vast majority could relate to what was put in the book. The vast majority could um, connect with it and thought that he was very accurate. And what transpires was is that it was all the same story. And it really articulated to me that often we think uh, we're very different, but actually we have more alike than probably we always we often assume. So when it comes to anxiety in your dog's behaviour. To anticipate that that person over there is thinking the worst of me, often they might be looking from a totally different perspective, or certainly that's the mindset that I would want to go out with, that they are looking at me thinking, wow, look at that person really trying to do the best in that situation, uh, and how can I often help them? So um, think about asking other people for help, um, and if you're out and about and you're struggling with your dog, rather than wording it in a way that says, um, could you call your dog back, my dog is reactive, um, if you start the phrase, the sentence or the engagement with, could you help me? My dog is worried about other dogs approaching. Could you um, put your dog on a lead or just give me some help and come and get your dog? Um, offering, again, studies have shown that when you extend the opportunity to help, people are more likely to be compliant as opposed to saying, could you get your dog on the lead? Because that then from a psychological point of view, points the finger at them and what they aren't able to do. So, 
Think about that. When you are feeling anxious, one of the things that you can do, the tools that you can use, is to start counting backwards from 10. Um, slowly and taking deep breaths. It's what can often happen when you get anxious is you stop breathing uh, as regularly and as fluently or fluidly, uh, and that can cause you to panic uh, uh, because you're not getting oxygen to the brain. So deep breaths, exhale, in through the nose, out through the mouth, and do 10 big breaths, counting them off. And as you do counting backwards from 10 to zero, um, you should feel yourself start to calm down. Um, Additionally, Think about when, when you're feeling anxious, try and describe things in your environment or, for example, your clothing. So um, I'm getting anxious and I'm wearing a black jumper. It's got a little um, gold crown on the chest and it has a zip and it has a hood and there's two metal rings in the hood and so forth and so forth. And that just gets your brain to be more present to what's going on. A classic thing that people describe when they have reactive dogs is the dog is fine off the lead, but when the dog is on the lead, the dog behaves very differently. And that's often due to that anxiety that the owner is feeling. Um, and that subsequently is communicated to the dog, consciously or subconsciously. Tightening of the lead, um, uh, a little bit more tension, pulling the dog back, hypervigilance in your body language, looking around and scanning, and that can become a conditioned um, trigger to the dog to preempt another dog approaching, and that can then cause the dog to be anxious and so forth and so forth. So a really good technique or tip to to avoid that happening is in your living room or your garden or a space that you know there's no distractions, pretend to do that body language and pair it with high value reinforcement. So call your dog in a frantic voice, whereas if you're panicking as if there's another dog coming and pair it with really, really high value reinforcement. Put the dog on the lead and pull it suddenly and hold it towards you as if there's another dog coming and call the dog's name and grab the collar and feed them loads of treats. So what you're doing is teaching them that that trigger actually means that there's something really, really, really high value on offer, and that can help change the dog's behavior, which can then have a domino effect to your anxiety. Feeling anxious about your dog's behavior is a really common, um, common theme that can happen with people that have dogs that have reactivity issues. And it can stem from, as I said, they may have previously had anxiety challenges um, and they might feel anxious in themselves you know it might stem from as i said past experience previous relationships um uh, previous dog ownership and it's very important to be aware of that and talk openly about you know your 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 the way in which you feel and also to to um journal is a great thing to to put some of that those thoughts down and paper so that that way and and just expressing it with people that you feel safe with to talk about so that you can say do you know what my dog's really making me feel anxious when i take him out uh, i'm always dreading and seeing another dog um because you're gonna and as you're the right in the right community and you have the right people they can help you and allow you the space to get that stuff off your chest and then think about moving forward i always urge people to not hold on to an experience that they've had with their dog and to move forward. And that sometimes takes more work than um, often um, is credited. And it's really important that as a community, we are patient with people that have reactive dogs so that we can be compassionate and kind to them um, and help them overcome uh, uh, their struggles because that's going to benefit us all. Um, So really for me, one of the um, things that we can do as people that don't necessarily have dogs with reactivity challenges is be understanding. Often, you know, the people that are working through challenges with dogs that are reactive, they're doing the best they can in the situation that they're in with the information that they have. It's not that they want their dog to behave in that manner, but they might not have necessarily have the knowledge, the tools, the, um, the understanding, the training um, to overcome that challenge. And that often is something that can be met with judgment, it can be have stigma attached to it. And as a collective, we need to be mindful of how we respond to people um, who have dogs that have some behavioural challenges. And that's both in person and certainly on social media and online. We need to be mindful. Often, you know, you know, there was recently a, a, an incident of a, um, a, a dog at agility show I don't know the details to be truthful, but the dog um, bit a judge in the ring. uh, And obviously that was a huge discussion on Facebook and and, and social media. And we need to be mindful that um, our 
judgments if we don't know the scenario or we were entitled to have an opinion but op offering that from a place of judgment is not going to help any of us move forward and that will only contribute to the greater anxiety that a lot of people feel and you know when they go if you've got a dog that behaves even mildly uh, uh inappropriately in comparison um to a, a dog that's more extreme they're going to go with a level of anxiety or they're going to have a level of anxiety because of, you know, what they read on Facebook last week about the such and such dog, etc. So we all have a collective responsibility to be kind to others and think about, you know, how we phrase things, how we, uh, you know, have the discussion. We all are going to be defensive of our dog's behaviour. And certainly if, um, um, you know, if I felt, you know, a dog was... Um, uh, could harm one of my dogs or one of my uh, or my daughter or my family my instant reaction is to be defensive towards that but often when we we simmer it down and we take a more logical perspective we realize that the person probably needs more support rather than judgment and uh, um and thrown to the wolves so to speak so think about that we all need to be kinder to people and in general so certainly anxiety is something that can definitely um contribute to the dog's level of anxiety. And it isn't to say that the person is at fault, it's saying how do we help this person feel less anxious about the situation. So as a collective, we can all be kinder and more compassionate and understanding. We can also be aware that, um, uh, that dogs go through um, strange stages of development. Certainly adolescent dogs, they display often anxious behaviour based on hormonal changes. Certainly uh, that's a very common uh, phenomenon with dogs. So understanding that, certainly those of us that partake, sorry, those of us that partake in sports, being understanding of the person with the adolescent dog that's behaving a little bit unruly and offering support. You know, if I've got my dog and another dog reacts towards it, can I move my dog further back? Can I put my dog on a down? Can I offer them assistance? Can I speak to them afterwards? Can I go and seek them at a dog show and offer them some support um, to help them? Can I offer them guidance and so forth and so forth? Um, so things like that. We, you know, we do have all have a collective responsibility. If I feel that my dog isn't coping with that environment, then I can work on the peripheries. I can make my peers know, aware of my dog's behaviour so they can support me and they can then implement whatever choices they want. So, you know, my dog has a reactivity challenge. I'd really be great if I had him in this environment. But if you stayed, um, you know, a little bit further away, I'd be really, really grateful. If you're not able to do that for whatever reason, it's not a problem. I can create distance. So we have that dialogue and that communication everybody's going to benefit. We don't want to ostracize people based on judgment um, because it, the, the, the way the universe works, if we, it's just as easy to be on the receiving end. You could be the next person that has a dog with some challenges. And until, you know, they say, when you, until you walk to a mile in a man's shoes or woman's shoes, uh, we, we should all be a little bit kinder to each other. So that's certainly something that can be the cause of anxiety. Sometimes anxiety with dogs certainly can be, a dog might be predisposed genetically to being anxious. You know, if you, um, if you breed two genetically anxious dogs together, the chances are you're going to have a whole litter of puppies that are anxious. So we need to be mindful of the, the temperament that we're looking at within dogs. And certainly if you're seeking a dog out, be mindful of the dog that you choose. Um, if it's predisposed to being fearful or anxious, think about whether you are confident and capable of dealing with the behaviour that that dog may exhibit and also to build the dog's confidence up. I've had dogs that, like Sugar actually, was a dog that was very anxious when we first got her. My Spitz Sonic, um, who is 13 now, he is a dog that was very anxious when I first got him. So I've had anxious dogs myself. Um, and my first dog definitely displayed some anxiety behave based behaviours. And I've had other dogs that have displayed it Come on, at various points in their life. Um, and, it's, and it is sometimes uh, something that um, is developmental. Sometimes it's something that's in the dog. Sometimes you can, um, you need to accept that the dog might not like certain things, you know, and that's absolutely fine. Advocate for the dog so they don't feel compromised and they feel safe. So that will build their confidence. But certainly a dog like Sugar, she really was a dog that just needed confidence given to her. How I did that was obviously being mindful of who she was. I used a lot of play to build her confidence uh, and um, 
to create trust with me because I wanted her to have um, a level of trust and resilience towards me handling. As you can see now, she, she loves to be handled. But when we first got her, she was very, very apprehensive about um, being handled and being touched. I shared on YouTube videos of some of the early training sessions with Sugar and showing very distinct and very strong uh, displacement um, behaviours and signals um, when I tried to instigate play with her and, uh, you know, appeasement behaviours because she'd probably been chastised or punished for playing or picking up toys in a previous life. Um, and she um, uh, was definitely apprehensive about my hands going towards her, as you can see now. She's she's brilliant. She's bomb proof. But that, again, was about working at a rate that was appropriate for the dog. Um, slowly and systematically building her confidence up. Um, shaping was a massive, massive thing to teach her to problem solve. That really empowered her in terms of her, her, her own confidence. So then she'd become more qu uh, curious about um, strange things as opposed to tentative and, and, and apprehensive. So that was a really, really massive thing for her. As I explained earlier, play was a huge thing. Teaching her to play with me and interact and being quite... Um, vigorous in my play and building that up systematically from you know gentle touch and then gradually building it up um good girl. and until the point of where obviously now she she loves being handled as you can see now she's a bit of a baby um but working on building her confidence up slowly and systematically so as i said there's lots of things that you can do with your dogs that have confidence issues or anxiety issues working on play playing on uneven surfaces, playing um, I, in the pandemic. I showed some videos of one of my puppies I, that I was working on confidence building. And I used some bubble wrap that I got in packages during the pandemic, which I got her to play over. She was very, very, um, wasn't bothered at all. But that's a great way to build up their confidence. Uneven surfaces, um, cardboard boxes, you know, confidence building, throwing treats in there, get them to go in there, investigate, put some wrapping paper, put some plastic balls or those you know the kiddie pool balls all those things are great to build up confidence in dogs and therefore subsequently reduce their anxiety levels so what that's going to do is help you as an owner have more confidence in the dog and therefore reduce your anxiety if the dog is going out being optimistic uh, rather than pessimistic um when i've had dogs in for residential training that have really really strong anxiety issues one of the things that i do is create distance away from the thing that causes them concern allow them to see things, take them in, not impose other people in their space um, so the dog can acclimatise and habituate to people, to dogs, to things uh, in a timeline that they are comfortable with. It might be five minutes at first and then gradually building that up and use that as a way to build their, your bond with them and not necessarily um, uh, pacifying them or saying they're, they're, there, but also not then just being sterile, finding that nice happy medium between, you know, re, uh, hating them and saying, oh, they're, they're there, because that's not going to instill confidence. In the same vein, not being um, cold and, and, and indifferent to them. Find that sweet spot. If they want to sit with you, sit with them, put your hand on them, you know, stroke them, touch them. Learning how to touch your dog in the ways that uh, is, it, it builds confidence, you know, like where to touch them, you know, like to stroke them and, and really, really, you know, um, hold, like touch their feet and build up that confidence, you know, so that the dog becomes more and more accepting of um, your hands on them. That's a really, really big thing for dogs that have anxiety issues. Often um, dogs that are anxious will be sensitive about touch. They'll be sensitive about sound. Another massive, massive contributing factor that can cause anxiety is uh, gut health. And uh, that's a massive, massive thing. You can find that if the dog isn't well in itself, they can be much more sensitive to environments. They can be much more sensitive to sound. They can be much more sensitive to touch. So that can create anxiety with them. So definitely make a little note and create a diary uh, and create collect data on the dog's um, uh, gut health. You know, noting it's... Um, what it eats, how much it eats, how it eats um, to the, the food. Um, if there's any patterns around it, when it eats is a good thing. Obviously looking at um, uh, what happens um, once it passes the food, making sure the dog has got good gut health is a huge part of um, ensuring the dog is happy and well in itself and therefore reducing anxiety. Um, a very good friend of mine had a dog that had um, allergies and he used to get very anxious because his gut wasn't settled. And it was, we know, a lot of unpacking and, and working out what he was allergic to. Uh, and when once his allergies were under control, 
his behaviour and his anxiety levels massively, massively improved. So we definitely need to be considering that when we're talking about anxiety in dogs. So anxiety as a whole is something that can definitely be the undercurrent for reactivity, whether it be the owner's anxiety levels about the dog's behaviour or the anxiety in general. Um, that can definitely be transmitted to the dog. So it's really important that we work on our own confidence. Create a safe space. Get your villagers around you. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, talk to other people about your concerns. Ask for assistance um, and start to build your own confidence up. Thinking about the language that you use when you talk about yourself is really, really impactful. I talked about that yesterday. And certainly with our dogs, there's lots of things that we can do to build their confidence. For me, play is a massive one. Shaping behavior is a huge one to build their confidence. Exposing them to things at a rate that they're comfortable with. So don't try and uh, immerse them too much. Just a little bit at a time. Take your time and allow that timeline. So just some musings there, everybody, about the, the human um, um, entity of reactive behavior and how we can help um, owners and, and um, to overcome reactivity and to build their own um, confidence up when it comes to dealing with their dogs that have reactivity issues and also um, identifying if their own anxiety could be the undercurrent for the dog's anxiety and also if we can help ourselves we can help the dog often as I said yesterday um, people that have anxiety struggles or confidence struggles they won't necessarily do it to help themselves, but if they can find a motivator big enough, i.e. the dog and the dog's well-being, they can find the strength within themselves to um, overcome those challenges. So just some musings there, guys. As I said, the doors to relabeling reactivity is currently open where you can be privy to conversations like this and lots of other information about how to overcome your reactivity challenges where you have me, my reactive, my relabeling reactivity team at your uh, your um, disposal uh, and are able to post videos and feedback or just to vent and share your journey of overcoming reactivity. If there's something that you feel will appeal to you, feel free to reach out to me or my uh, send me an email. We could, I can certainly give you some guidance or send me a PM and I can certainly give you some support. You'll have 12 months access hundreds of videos on various aspects relating to reactivity, core skills, overcoming reactivity, um, enrichment for your dogs, things that you can do with them, a whole plethora of information. So yeah, if you want to be part of that community, sign up now. The doors are currently open for the VIP section and I look forward to having you there. So I don't know if there's any questions from anybody on anxiety relating to, um, that are relating to, uh, yeah, absolutely, Lizzo. So I, I, in my um, experience, again, what, it, and again, I think they've done studies on it to show that when we ask the person for help, as opposed to highlighting to them, oh, you have no control on your dog, that makes them defensive. It's like we're accusing them. You know, the truth be told is that they probably don't have uh, control over their dog and they probably can't get the dog back if, with best intentions. But if you ask them for help, most people are programmed to to respond to that in a positive way. So think about that as a as a way to avoid the situation escalating. Um, sounds silly, but how can I tell if my dog is anxious? He's not carrying the corner. He's up for trying anything. He does have a very short attention span. He's high, highly reactive, but I'm not sure what anxious looks like. Well, that's a really good point. So anxiety doesn't always manifest itself as the dog that cowers in the corner. A dog that's hyperactive, that again has low, uh, high level, uh, sorry, low levels of focus, um, that could be anxiety. A, a dog that's really happy panting, frantic in their movement, that could be anx anxious. So you definitely looking at the dog's behavior uh, holistically um, and thinking about uh, the dog's, uh, 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 the relationship that we have with the dog beyond just the confines of that one situation. So, you know, how does the dog respond when you call it? How does the dog respond in the home? What is the dog like? Does the dog settle? Does the dog have um, a good recall? Does the dog have good understanding of core behaviours? Sit down and come when called. Um, is the dog confident in general? And so forth and so forth. Uh, really good ways to help you identify if the dog is anxious or whether the dog is um, just needs more tra uh, education. Yeah, so I hope that's helped you answer that one. Anybody else got any questions? Okay, I think that's about it. So, uh, oh, is reactivity infectious to more than two dogs? Um, it's not necessarily infectious because reactivity isn't actually a, you know, a, a ailment or a disease. 
it's a, a word to describe behavior. It absolutely can be, um, a dog can transmit it because dogs are social beings. They can absolutely, so, you know, if, if for example, you know, um, one of my dogs barked, everybody else is going to alert to that response, um, you know, if I was out on a walk. So they would instantly go, well, be hypervigilant. That definitely can be the case. It doesn't mean that they've got, the other dogs are um, reactive or have an issue. It's just they go, well, why is that dog barking? It's a really noise, uh, sorry, it's a really um, common phenomenon. Um, but not, it's not cont infectious per se, because but it's more that dogs are, you know, they're pack animals. They're social creatures. They pick up on each other's body language. They pick up on each other's behavior. Um, so absolutely one dog can certainly um, create the habit or uh, uh, for one, but to influence another dog's behavior to become fearful, defensive, etc. So I've, I, um, I've had dogs that were um, scared of fireworks and um, he de one dog definitely um caused my other dogs to respond uh, out of fear to fireworks and when he passed away my dogs the other dogs stopped doing it so um it wasn't necessarily that the other dogs were concerned about the fireworks itself they were more concerned about that dog's behavior and how he was responding is noise sensitivity anxiety um not necessarily but it well could be so if a dog can be noise sensitive but it doesn't necessarily mean they're anxious as themselves you know, Super is a dog that's definitely, he's, um, he would be uh, aware of gunshot, but he's a dog that competes in working trials, and one of the elements is a gun test, and he can, you know, remain in position while the gun goes off, he doesn't particularly like it, but he goes, okay, fine, I'm gonna, you know, stay here, because I know that in a second I'm gonna get high value reinforcement, um, so I wouldn't describe as a noise, uh, yeah, I would say he's noise sensitive. That's you know, I would say he's noise sensitive. He's more noise or noise aware, um, but I wouldn't say he was an anxious dog. So it, the two things aren't necessarily related. Um, but often you could find dogs that are um, anxious can have noise sensitivity or environmental sensitivity. Thank you. He's perfect at home. Sleeps eighteen hours plus a day. Learns new skills at home. Finds outside world overstimulated and finds it hard to transfer skills to our house so I guess he's anxious outside but not at home yeah and that could also be um you know how consistent you are without uh, outside the home you know do you have the same rules do you have the same response from him is the dog as responsive outside it's just a change of environment so if the dog is struggling in a new environment it doesn't necessarily mean that the um the dog has uh, reactivity issues it could be a, an understanding and education issue so can the dog do it in the front garden the back garden the bedroom, upstairs, downstairs, and so forth. Can I now take it to his new location and generalize that behavior? So yeah, just some things to think about. Okay, all, um, I do have to do the school run. So I'm gonna uh, 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 cut this off a bit short. If you do, uh, or certainly um, pause for questions. If you do have any more questions, by all means post them and I'll pick them up later on. Oh, I'll do this one. Low drive border collie becomes very distracting and well if a dog is retrieving or doing articles in the next ring. Do you classify this as anxiety or just sensitivity to movement? Or do you just keep working on tension to owner or correct? So I definitely wouldn't correct the dog. Um, I would say it's probably motion sensitivity and probably a little bit just distracted. So I would work on the dog being more focused with on me um, and motion and things being thrown, etc. Um, and being the distracting entity. So you can start that with dog is focused on you have somebody just move a dumbbell not even throw it just move it and then place it on the ground then move it a tiny bit and build that up systematically and make sure, sure that you're reinforcing the dog for uh focusing on you also counter condition it move a dumbbell high value reinforcement move a dumbbell high value reinforcement so the dog starts to predict that whenever a dumbbell's been thrown something good is going to happen to them so yeah hopefully that's giving you some ideas all right, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you. Thank you for all your questions. If you have any more, by all means, post them on um, this thread or if you pick this up later on this evening, feel free to post questions. Just tag me in it, Kamal Fernandez, and I will, uh, um, or Kamal Fernandez Dog Training, and I will pick it up and respond to them. Whatever you're doing, enjoy your day, be safe, look after your dogs, and take care.